Hey, what's up guys? Welcome to an episode of Pat Tay's Performance. Today, in the driveway, we are unfortunately working on my beloved customized Tour Time Master. Um, you guys do know throughout my channel, I do have my qualms about this mower, even though I do use it. This video will apply to a couple of machines that are not a Toro Time Master and, that, and that's my problem. Um, I run the 8.75 190cc overhead valve engine. Uh, it's underpowered. It should, does not belong on this lawnmower. I've done a few things to uh, up the ante a little bit, but in the end, it is still a uh, inferior weak engine. And I'll show you why. Anyhow, um, if you guys watch my lawn care vlog, and if not, it's going to be in the description because you're going to hear the symptoms and the behavior of what a blown head gasket sounds like. And when I was using the machine, I thought of it and I didn't want to believe it. And believe it or not, one of my subscribers, Nighthawks Mowers, said, hey pal, your head gasket is blown. And it is. I'm not going to start up the machine because I want the machine nice and cold. So, in the link in the description is in the description is going to be a link of me using the lawnmower, and there will be all of your symptoms: the popping sound, the lack of power, the machine dying, a uh, hard start per se, three pulls for me instead of one, and uh, you know it's really just very disheartening. I did get a good deal on this lawnmower. I paid two fifty for it two years ago. Uh, in non-running condition, it was still in phenomenal shape. Uh, I had to do really nothing to it to get it running. I just put sea foam in it, a half a go-go juice, and uh, we were on our way. And this thing's ran fantastic since. I do have an aftermarket carburetor on here. Uh, it's going on year one now, fantastic. The reason why I have an aftermarket carburetor on here is that somebody who has this lawnmower, who needed it, wanted an OEM carburetor, and he wanted it now. So he paid me uh, very handsomely for it, and I got a Chinese one. I don't care. So this job is not hard at all. Take your time. It's nuts and bolts. And we're going to get this done together. So first things is, we're just going to work our way around the engine. We need to expose the head. We're going to start off by taking the air filter. It's pretty easy. All right, I'm just going to unscrew this cap. Our air filter is exposed. Now's a good time to check it, see if it needs to be serviced or replaced, and we're done. Then from there, we're going to move to the next step. We are going to systematically remove stuff around the head so it's just easier to work on. So right here is our carburetor and we're going to have to remove that as well. Don't be scared. Don't be nervous. It's just gonna, we're just going to slide this out of the way. That's all we're doing. So this is 5 16 for 8 millimeters. Okay, and it comes right out. I'm using quarter inch drive. If you want to use something else, by all means, just don't go crazy. And it just comes out just like that. Next, what we're going to have to do is remove the carburetor. Okay, and we have these two bolts right here. Now, if you guys could see, one of the tricks I did for more power is, look, I adjusted the governor spec. Remember, we have to access the head right here, and the carburetor is connected to the head. So it has to come off. So remember, you would just want to Take these balls. And just set them aside. And you see that here? 
That's all we had to do. Let it sit. Make sure we do not lose this O-ring and this plate right here. We're gonna leave it just like that. Now we're gonna move over to the exhaust side. All right guys, so here we got the exhaust. Okay, so there's going to be a series. This is, this is your exhaust, well, right here. This is your assembly. This is your muffler shield, and this is your muffler itself. In order to access the muffler, we need to remove the muffler shield. Same premise, 5.16 or 8 millimeters. We have one bolt there. There's gonna be another one that's a pass-through right here. Even though I'm not showing it, just use mechanical instinct, please. And you see this hole right here? There's your other one. We now have access to our muffler shields. I mean, uh, we now have access to our muffler. Now look at this. Okay, so let's talk. On the left-hand side, that muffler bolt, this flap is nice and tight. This is loose. So either someone's been in here or improper installation from the factory. So what you do is you just take a flat tip screwdriver or a hammer and a chisel. Okay, we're gonna get inside this right here and hit it and bend it out. Okay, and now we have access to these bolts. So we're gonna get those out as well. All right, so just 13 millimeter or half inch. All right. Okay. And now we could remove our muffler. I'm gonna zoom out and I'm gonna give you another angle. Okay, so in here, you can see our exhaust is hanging. Don't fret. Okay, we're just gonna pull this out, nice and easy, and we're gonna pay attention. We have one gasket here, okay? Sometimes these gaskets like to crumble and separate. So if it's two gaskets, that's fine. You're gonna be just okay. You could reuse them. If you wanna replace them, by all means go for it. Let's set that aside. Now we're gonna pay attention. Remember we're talking about paying attention? Look, there's another gasket in the back of this. And this holds up to our thermostatic choke lever. As the exhaust gets hot, this will pull out the choke. We're going to remove the spark plug. Right, Uncle Rob? Okay, and now, or basically, our head should be free. I'm almost positive, but let's pop off this engine cover to make sure to get another good view at the top angle. Okay, so as we all know, no secret, very another common problem with the Time Master, a leaky gas cap. I have repaired this twice. I am done. I am not doing it anymore. I did find a permanent fix. Um, I'm not sure if I'm going to post it on the channel. Again, 5 sixteenths or 8 millimeter, because that tank style has been discontinued and they give you the crappy updated version, which is on the lawnmower, unfortunately. So the cowling and the recoil come off in one shot. Let's put these nuts back on so we don't lose them. This is just my electric start. I never use it. I think I might get it going this year, we'll see. And there's a coil to charge our battery. Maybe I will get it started. Actually, you know what? I bought a battery. I'm going to charge it up. Excuse me. Okay, so now we have our head bolt exposed. Our head. I'm sorry. Stick this over on the side. 
This is our valve cover gasket. And our head bolts are right here. I wonder, I wonder, we're thinking out loud, if we can get away without, we're not gonna touch the valve cover. We could just pull the head out, like so. And it seems like that is the case. I think one of these are eight, or I think these are 10 millimeter, and that's a bad thing. All right, so it's a series of four 10 millimeter bolts. We're gonna pull it with the valve cover still on. Okay, in this camera angle, you could see three of them. One, two, three, and obviously the fourth one is tucked underneath. So I'm gonna break these by hand. Oh my God, that's nice and loose. That was really loose. Scary. Oof. You see that? That just came right off. Uh, anyway, start these out by hand. See that? See? This one was a little hard to come out, which I guess is a good thing, you know? That was very loose. I wonder if a loose head bolt was my issue. But it's too late now. We're here. Okay, I broke it loose. I'm gonna switch over to my ratchet. If you don't have one of these, that's fine. So apparently if these bolts are undersized, and if these bolts weren't undersized, we wouldn't have this problem. From what I read, just like, just sharing that, don't hold me to it. <laughs> going to expose our head. Nice and easy. Oh, look at this. Can you guys see that? This is where a head gasket blew. Right there. So what we're going to do now is we are going to clean this up and I'll show you exactly how we're going to do that. So what I like to use is a wire wheel on a grinder and we're just going to go around here and clean this all up. What a shame. What a shame. All right guys, so I got my uh, die grind. Happens to be from Harbor Freight. This is a wire wheel. So I'm just gonna work my way around here and clean this all up. I'm gonna do the same thing on the head as well. Okay, I'm gonna do that off camera, mechanical instinct, you guys can figure it out. There are other ways to do it. You can use a gasket scraper, but time is money per se, and I'm just gonna go through it and clean this up off camera. See you when I'm done. All right, so let's get our head gasket on there. Okay, brakes part number, it's going to be in the description, 796475, your affiliate link will be there. If you guys found this video helpful, please use that affiliate link to purchase the part. It is the cheapest price that I could find on the internet. So yeah, that's how you support the channel, please. Mrs. Mrs. Pate's performance, and I would greatly appreciate it. So just going to lay it in here like so. Okay, and remember, I gave everything a quick wipe down. And that's really it. We'll get our, see these two right here? These are rockers, we gotta make sure they go right into the hole that they blown.
So I can't put this in the full tilt because I have a striping kit on here. And in order for me to get this in full tilt, I have to remove the striping kit. Get our first bolt. I'm gonna put some anti C's on there, right? Just on threads like so. And we're just gonna start it. We're not gonna, we're not gonna snug this up. Just a little bit so we don't have so we can let it go. And I like to do a crisscross pattern. Remember, I'm starting these by hand. Do not, do not, do not run these down with your gun or anything. This is aluminum. That's why when we were cleaning up the head, I wasn't pressing onto it. You don't want to scar more of the head. Anything, you should be sending your head out to MC Engineering. Check him out, Craig Camp, on Instagram. No, I'm joking, you don't have to send your head out. Unless you want to do some crazy stuff. Like V-Twin Garage, you guys are into hopping motors up. Check out V-Twin Garage. He's doing a full build right now on an engine. So, let's see. Yep. All right, so we started. We're going to go on to our next one. Okay, then and also another good channel for hopped up engines. Tractor pulling and stuff like that. It's Polar Bear Ed. And then if you're into mini bikes, you got to check out Tampa Boys Customs. We just did the TBC 100, which is pretty cool. Tampa Boy Customs 100, which is a 100 lap mini bike race. And also, go-karts are gone fishing. Another good channel uh, about mini bikes and hopping stuff up. Great group of guys. Great group of guys. Oh, and gals, and gals. There's Mrs. Go-karts are gone fishing as well. So anyway, I'm just starting these by hand. Nice and snug. Where did I put everything? There we are. I'm gonna run these down. Okay, so now we're just gonna do a torque sequence. I couldn't find the exact torque specs online, so we're just gonna go by feel. I you know I'm, I'm big. I'm big into torque, but I just couldn't find anything. So my hand. I'm tempted to just do the torque wrench. I know snow blowers are flatheads. They're 90 inch pounds. And you see how I'm going in a crisscross pattern.
This is bothering me that we don't have torque specs. Let me just double check and I'll be right back. So just for poops and giggles, I should have pulled off my valve cover first. I would have missed it. All right, so I looked online. I found a pretty shady website, but we'll, we'll rock with it. 140 inch pounds. Seems a lot, but we'll go with it. We'll, we'll ride with 140 inch pounds in a nice sequence across 140. I don't know if you guys could hear that click, it's very subtle. It's like my natural instinct to just over torque this. All right, that's it. Okay, now just a quick tech tip if you wanted. You didn't have to, I, I chose not to. If you want, watch this. You can slap the head on. Oh, come on, come on. Well, anyhow, what I did is I pulled the head off I was able to slide the rockers in, and then I put the rockers over it. You're going to be just fine. Yeah, see, all right, so we'll push in. See that? Let's start all over again. Here's one for an example, right? So we got that out. Oh, you know what? We'll go on this side. So your rocker's going to be loose. I'm just going to take this. Slide it in, it could only go in one way. All right, so let's hold up the video for a minute. We're gonna talk about getting the push rods into place the way they should be, okay? This thing on an angle is called your rocker arm and your spring, your valve springs are on the left, okay? Push down on the valve spring with the rocker arm still attached and you're able to push up the other side where the push rod is and you can pull the push rod out, okay? And then you could stick it exactly where it needs to go. That plastic piece is going to guide it right in. And then from there, you're going to swing the rocker arm over, push it down on the spring, and swing it on. And you guys are good to go. All right. Hope you guys found this uh, helpful. Really sorry I missed it. And uh, hopefully I did a good job explaining it to you guys the way it should be done. And this covers the reason why I says you need to pull the valve cover off as well. Okay, and the same thing, just push, and it's gonna click right in. And that's it. Now we can put our spark plug on, All right? It's not gonna start. And now we can start putting this thing back together. This gasket is fine. You see that? So we're good to go. Just make sure no debris got in here. We'll stick that right over. And now we have our head gasket bolt. I mean our, our valve cover bolt. Put some ANECs on there. That's right, starting it by hand. All right, that's all we're doing. Nice and easy, by hand. Again, we're using mechanical instinct, remember that, all right? We don't need to see where every bolt goes because we're taking this apart yourself. So. I'm going to zoom you guys out a little bit and then we will start to um, assemble this. I'm taking the, whenever you store a torque wrench, take the tension off of it, put it back down to zero please. That's how you weaken the spring, so that's what I exactly did. I'm going to put this back. I'm going to do our 
our valve cover bolt. Just one hit for good measure. So if you leak oil, you know you done there wrong. Let's get the carburetor mounted up and then we'll do the exhaust. Fair? Fair enough? Fair enough. And the premise is because we have to line up all of those, we have to line up the thermal sensor, actuator, I keep calling it a sensor the thermal actuator first. So let's get those carburetor bolts. This might be a little, I might be blocking you guys. Give me a break. We're going to slide that in. This can only fit one way. There's two tits here and here, and those have to line up. If they do not line up, this will not seat right, and you will have some running issues. So that is your dead giveaway. Just getting my uh, 5 16 again. Remember, what are we doing? We are starting them by hand. Keyword, by hand. It's going to be a very common theme in my channel. Hopefully I've earned your subscription. If you haven't already, smash the like button, smash the subscribe button. Okay, we're starting this by hand. If you want to turn a nice, easy job into a complicated one, so let's not do that. Let's see, I'm just using my ratchet to establish that I got a good base. And I do. And then now I'll just use this to take it the rest of the way. Right? See that? I don't, f when you use your, no matter what tool you use automatically, you can't feel that bite or that initial grip. So that's why I kind of slam it down and I let the rest go from there. Okay. No, let's leave that off. We'll bounce back. Let's get this thermo sensor hooked up, routed, and we'll go from there. All right. So you have our exhaust. And remember, the gasket that fell, right, can only go. Oh, this has been stripped. Yeah, someone's been in here. Hopefully, that's not an issue. We just repaired this. So remember, this is going to go like so. Okay, and then our gasket, our other gasket is going to go just like this. Let's get, let's make sure our sensor is hooked. And then now we can swing it in and we can start to tighten it. Okay. So now because of the circumstances, I am doing this by hand. There will be no, no, no gun. Make sure you guys get it view of this. Yep. And that's only because, remember this one looked like someone was in here. 
and it actually looks shredded. That's it. You don't want to over tighten it. Remember, this is aluminum. You do not want to strip aluminum. Yeah, see this? This is just turning. And we're screwed. Should I speak too soon? Oh, this is grabbing. All right, perfect. Okay, perfect. Now remember, our flat tip screwdriver. Perfect, that's lined up. Let's get our flat tip screwdriver. And you see how, let's see if we can get a good zoom. Okay, this is the flat tip of the head. Right? You want to line that up with this tab that bends over. Because this tab will lock in and seat that. See that? That is perfect. That's exactly what you want. And the same thing. See, this bolt's a little off. So just give it a quarter turn. Like so. We're lined up, and we know we're good to go. And then we will send this home. Okay? Now we know we are officially in. And since we're here, right, let's put our protective heat shield on. We'll slide it over the opening first. And same thing here. Okay, we're gonna... <clears throat> a little bit of anti-seize. As you guys could tell, I'm a huge fan of anti-seize. It helps with rusty bolts. You ever get a rusty bolt that snaps? Well, maybe if somebody put anti-seize, that would decrease the chances of that happening. So that's exactly what I'm doing. Just a little bit on the thread. And then as you t tighten it, right, it'll spread itself onto the thread. So let's, ooh, it's a little finicky, a little, little bit of pain in the butt. I have magnetic sockets, but then I feel I shouldn't use them because you guys don't have magnetic sockets. And that's cheating. So let's try and stick it through here. And I'm guiding it. Not really, I'm doing a terrible job guiding it. gonna have to dance. In about three seconds I'm gonna use a magnetic socket. You guys are just gonna have to figure it out. You guys are just gonna have to do a little bit of a dance. I'm dancing. I'm alternating between hand and socket. Alright that's in. Let's get the last one in there. There's a very good disclaimer when you use anti seas. You're gonna get it on you. You're gonna get it on everything else you touch. But it's well worth the sacrifice.
actually, as I'm walking around this machine, I have to do some paint work on it. Well, preventative maintenance, right? You know, rust is a big killer of lawnmowers. I'm starting to get a little rusty, unfortunately. I guess that'll be another video, unfortunately, for another day. Because I actually love this little bastard. And me and Mrs. Pat Taste Performance were in a, a little debate because I want to put a cowie on here from a turf master. I already have I already have aluminum pulleys from a turf master on here. So we got free range. Let's put our cover on. Take these nuts back off. Can you guys see this? Yes, you guys can. Again, mechanical instinct. I right, just slide it on. These four holes are gonna line up. Pull the recoil so it seats in to make sure it sits. And we're good to go. Okay, just starting these by hand. It's because I can't get my fingers on there. I'm just using the socket to start it. What happened? Wanna stop? Uh oh. Don't do this to me. All right, we're almost there. No, we're not. Come on, why are you being stubborn? And right, we're in there. All right, now we're going to slap the carburetor. The air filter housing on. All right, so let's get this air filter housing back on. This right here goes into the back of your air filter. So make sure that's connected, that's your vent. And then we will get our two bolts. This will line up. Now remember, I've already replaced the carburetor on here. So there is anti-seize, so I don't have to reapply it. But if you want it, go ahead. Take note, see how I'm feathering the trigger. And then I just I do it myself. You don't want to strip anything. We will get our air filter. Where'd you go? Where'd you go? I took it out. Now, personally, I would just blow this out. I'm going to blow this out after. We'll do that later.
Okay, we're in. Now I said I was gonna charge up a battery, so this is gonna be bonus footage. I'm gonna put a battery in there. This is your standard battery, okay? ML3-12, it's a lot cheaper. It's less than 20 bucks. I think if you wanna go with the OEM Toro battery, it's a lot more. All right, guys, moment of truth. A little bit longer than uh, I wanted to, but these plastics were a pain in the butt. So we're gonna use the electric start, and then now we're gonna see what happens when we engage the blade. Remember, the lawn mower used to take a while to start three pulls, and, and it also used to die when we used to gauge the blades. You had to do it really, really slow. So, key. Okay. Wow. Instantaneous. That's perfect. Now we're gonna engage the blades real quick. All right, guys, we got plenty of power. That is a wrap. Okay. Uh, believe it or not, um, I do have a lawn care V log. If you want to see this lawnmower run, check this puppy out in the next week or so, all right? So, with that being said, um, if you guys found this video helpful, smash the like button, smash the subscribe button, and guess what? I'll see you guys on our next episode of Pat Taste Performance, and do not forget to enter our giveaway that Mrs. Pat Taste Performance is doing. I don't remember what it is, because again, she did it on her own, and uh, I don't agree with it, but that's life. So, uh, see you guys on the next episode of Pat Taste Performance. Later.